All right, we are back, Mama. This is episode six of our Beyond the Skills podcast. And today we're going to talk about some things that are somewhat controversial. And it's a huge problem in the world between married couples and entrepreneurial couples. And I think that uh, we've been through our fair share of, you know. Doing it the wrong way. Yeah, I, I think that's, and I could say that we're experts on it because we did it ass backwards, right? And, and kind of worked our way out of the mud to become a valuable woman and a valuable man to one another. And this episode is going to be about, you know, how to become a valuable man and a valuable woman to your partner, right? How to become a high value individual to your partner. Yeah. And I think we have been through so many different seasons of life so far, not all of them, but some of them. And we've had to pivot our roles and um, communication and just overall well-being with for each other in those seasons. Well, I'm going to make a note right here because that is a very pertinent thing you just said about because what what becomes valuable in your 20s is not valuable in your 30s and 40s. And what's probably valuable right now at, at 42 is probably not going to be valuable And at life 60. is just harder in certain seasons for one, maybe one person and not, you know, it was harder for me when I was having babies. or You know, just those types of seasons were very hard. Yeah. And let's talk about that. Let's talk about what was, you know, we can kind of talk about our 20s, 30s, and 40s. Because the intention for us is to give you guys as much value of life experience, not not bullshit that we're just making shit up. Like this has our, been our experience and wisdom we can extract to you guys for just from just totally fucking up. <laughs> yeah, and I would say we need to start with the first year. The first year of marriage was really, really hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's it's most it's most of the time it is hard for everybody because you're trying to readjust to this new norm but of. It was extra hard for us. Though. It was extra hard for us because we already had a child. And we had a lot of conflict outside our marriage that was brought into our marriage. And we almost got divorced our first year of marriage. And I was on drugs. Yep. Yeah. I mean, let's get started. So, you know, I think we need to define first for the audience, you know, our definition in our own words of what a valuable man is and what a valuable woman is. Right. And I, I think to sum up a 50,000 foot view of what that looks like for for me as a woman, like what I look for in a woman is in you. Do you make my life easier or do you make my life harder? And that's what you should be. The number one question you should, if you're watching right now. Are you right a liability now, or are you an asset? That's right. <laughs> you should be asking yourself right now, if you're watching this and you feel like your marriage is on the rocks, does your wife provide massive value to you? And that's a, that's, that's a hard uh, pill to swallow because she might, she might be making your life harder and vice versa yeah that's the whole point yeah. i made i didn't i wasn't i wasn't making your life easier when we first got no married. not at all that is the premise of this we, we will reverse engineer everything from what i just said does your wife or husband make your life easier and what that looks like right so you know let, let's start off like what what is i'll start off with you patty you know what do you define as, that was what, my, in my own words, now what do you define as a valuable man? Well, you know, I think for each person, we, we come into marriage with what we maybe expected or saw as kids in our own parents. So I think that brings in, like, um, expectations, good or bad. Like, you know, some people have parents with great marriages, some people have the opposite. Uh, for me, my parents had an excellent marriage and I was very um stern on what I wanted out of a husband and just a man and I I like a man who's willing to work all the time he's always has a project he's not lazy um he provides for well, and, his and family I, and you said something I don't mean to cut you off but I want to inject interject here but you said something it depends on how you are you're we're up your upbringing right now. Because it changes your expectations yes. of what reality is and what what you want or what you don't want, you know. Um, because expectations is a big part of just marriage, good or bad. You could have bad expectations or good. But for me, I had, I feel like I had really high expectations because I had such a good upbringing with my parents. Um, they always spend time together. Um, the roles were very um, significant, and they each knew their roles. 
And the lines were never crossed where they were blaming each other for not doing the correct roles. And they always... So run it like a business, like we always said. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's... Everybody knew what they needed to do. Yeah. But I think I think a lot of couples don't have that hard... We didn't, we didn't really talk about like, okay, I expect this out of you before you get married. And you didn't tell... We were just like, okay, we, ha- we, got, we got pregnant. We got to get married. Well... Five years later, we got married. So we had a little bit of time in between to kind of find who we were. But we were still really young. We were 22 when we finally got married. And we were still really young. So 17 I, when we had the baby. Yeah. And I think um, because we had to grow up so fast, we felt like we kind of missed out. So then we would we would mess up at times because we would fall into that. Oh, well, I wish I was young again. I got to experience different things, you know. Right. Okay. But. I'm going to, you know, well, let's talk about what a, you know, a valuable man looks like, because, you know, for, for me, you know, I've had to learn this. Nobody taught me this. Like, you, I think I did so much self-reflecting and so much personal development that I naturally, if you reflect on, you know, your character and you want to get better, you, you're going to become more valuable. Right. And I think I did it by default because I worked on myself, you know, so I think for you guys, you know, because let's just be real. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I, you, you hear it in all these moms groups all the time, how their their wives are miserable with their husbands. They hadn't had sex in a year in some cases. Yeah. Dude, that's not natural. That is not healthy at all, right? And why is that? Because they've lost the value. You, do you think a, a wife's going to have, you know. This have- is a very hot topic in mom groups. And there's a lot of different <laughs> women who are very, like, feministic when it comes to controlling that part of marriage and for me it's a value exchange and it's that is a part of marriage that's what i'm getting into it was a trick question because listen men need certain things and so do women women want to be taken care of and nurtured and they want to feel like they're being taken care of men are more feely touchy they need sex they need food they need they want to feel love they want to feel like they want to feel um appreciated and you got to have these hard conversations with yourself and and so maybe that maybe sex isn't important to that woman, but she needs to understand that it's important to her husband. And that's why that love language book is really good. Learning like what your partner is like really thinks, you know, that's what they like. You have to know what they like and, and don't like and put attention on those things they need. You women that are watching this, you know, do you think your husband is going to think you're valuable if you're not having sex with him? Probably not. Let's be real. I mean, that's just part of, that's, that's just nature. It's just very hard to talk about. Because- it ain't hard to talk about. It's nature. It's not, it's not hard to talk about. Yeah. You get a sip on that coffee, that tea, mama. That's, it's the truth. How you know that's not wine? You know? Okay. Well, it might be wine. <laughs> After talking no. to this, it might be wine. But you have to learn. But here's the thing. You got to take full responsibility as a man and be like, why is my wife not wanting to have sex with me? That's really the question. That's true, too. Or is he not doing his part and she feels like she doesn't have to give him that value because he's not giving his in return? That's what I'm getting to. I personally, and this is me personally in my relationship, um, I think it's very important for me to produce what you need because he overproduces on his end all the time. Overproduces. And... That's just what I see, and I just see somebody who's working so hard, and I just the to to withhold something like that is just it would be so basically it would not be good on my end. Basically, what you're saying when 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 you want it, I have to give it to you. It's basically what <laughs> yeah, you're insinuating, sure. and I and I have to. I mean, I get it. I know. I, I mean, you have needs and wants. So, anyway, guys, but you know, these are some of the things that you're gonna have to have a hard talk with your wife, right? You know, it, and it, but back to what I was saying about becoming fully. Re- First, I, you know, if I'm, if I'm a man in, in a you know in a marriage, and, and I'm an entrepreneur, this is this because this podcast is based around being entrepreneurial married couples. You know, there has to be a fine line between you know, are you providing enough value to your wife, and that could be on the financial side, right? Because if if you're not providing financially. Yeah, because honestly, if you provide financially, you could fix all of those other small little things that get into your life that makes the marriage hard, like hiring help, babysitters, cleaning ladies, like people that can help you get rid of those petty things so you could focus on what's important. 
And financially, that's what's going to well, fix those let, things. Well, let's be real. You guys that are business owners out there, if your wife has, you know, more than two kids, especially if he has, she has more of th- than three kids, and this is coming from pure experience, this is not my opinion on it, you got to get your wife some help. Like, we literally, my wife had a nervous breakdown after our fifth kid. We had no help. And a lot of that was, you know, due to not just me, but you. You were very protective. You didn't want nobody to watch our yeah, kids. Yeah, I was very protective of who I and wanted to watch my kids. We probably weren't We probably weren't in a financial. Well, we were probably were back we then. Were, we were, in but a I was just being very, like. I just, overly protective. So, but you need, and not every woman's going to be that, but I, be like that. But I know a lot of women will be but like that. But there are awesome people out there that will do just as good of a job as you do. So, well, and it didn't have to, it's not like it's going to take away your mom role. You got to have some breathing room. I had a call with one of my students um, this morning, Taylor, that I talked to about that. You know, you know, they have a new, they have a second, their second baby coming. And he, you know, we were talking about that and he said how much of a game changer it, it has been for him. And, and I was reflecting and, and telling him how much in, like, if I could go back into the past, I would have got a baby after this, I would have got a help after the second baby. Yeah. Because, when you're listen, let's be real, entrepreneur men. It is easier to run a business and go to work than it is to raise kids and, and change diapers and screaming babies day in and day out. You it's better give your wife exhausting. Yes, you better give your wife some grace. And if you are, you know, if you're young and you go into the hunting camp every weekend, or you know, you're hanging out with your buddies still, you know, and you're 22, 23, and you got you got two kids. Dude, you, your priorities out of whack. You're not a become, you're not being a valuable man to your wife. You're not making your your wife's life what easier. Yeah. You you know, and and that's that's part of being a high value man. And you were working on Saturdays for years some, and years. Some days on Sundays. Yeah. Right. And so it was just like there was no time to there was no me time to mentally shake off or rest. For me personally. It was the exhaustion that would get to me, like even just a 30-minute nap, just for a husband to say, hey, why don't you go take a 30-minute nap? You know, go rest and close yourself in the room. That in itself is a game changer. And it's a simple it's a simple ask, you know. Yeah. Well, it, look, an, another key thing, too, a, a high-value man, he, just like a woman, you got to take care of your body, folks. Like, you know, I'm 42. I'm not, I'm not as, you know, in the, in the shape I was when I was 22. But I feel like I'm not in, you know, I feel like I'm in really good shape for a 42-year-old. Could it be better? Absolutely. But, you know, you can't let yourself go. And that goes for women too, right? You know, obviously if you're having a baby and stuff and, you you know, you, you gain 30, 40, 50 pounds after having a baby, I mean, it, takes, it might take a year. But that is part of becoming valuable, right? So you, you got to lift weights. You got to, Right. Well, for your mental health, too. Yeah, not even just, yeah, it, it doesn't even go back to just looking good for your significant other. I mean, we're kind of past the stage where, like, I need you to look like a supermodel. I mean, I'd like you to look like, you still kind of look like good a, thing. a supermodel, but <laughs> not like you were when you were 17, right? I mean, five babies later. <laughs> you have, uh, that's what happens when you, look like a, when you look like a supermodel. You have a bunch of babies. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's just real life. You got to keep up with your body because it's going to give you a competitive edge in business if you if you're lifting weights and it's gonna make you more valuable as a man amongst other men if i'm meeting another man and he's 100 pounds overweight and i'm trying to do business with him what do you think i'm thinking and i hate to i'm just being real with you guys what do you think do you think i'm gonna want to go into business with this guy dude you can't even take care of your body how are you gonna take care of my business that we partner up with you know we've had that conversation right and, and it, dude, it's your, it's your responsibility to get in shape, right? And don't think men don't other, judge other men by the way they look. Just like women. You know, women judge women by the look. All Absolutely this, not. Yeah, right. <laughs> the, all this bullshit, don't judge people. Listen, in the business world, everybody judges everybody. We're hyper aware of how you look, what you do, what you say, how you say it, how you act. And we value another man by how he looks before he speaks, right? So if he's, you know, not in good shape and, and, and you could tell he just, and he eats like shit and you, you eat like shit in front of other high value men who do eat good, who do lift weights, guess what? You're going to be below value on the totem pole of the value scale amongst men. And we judge, when we judge one another and who we, we want to, you know, mingle with. That's just the facts. Of, that's just natural nature, right? So 
Mama, what do you think about that in, in relate to women and their body? Well, I feel like I feel like it's important to have me time, and that me time should be taking care of your mental and physical health. Um, it's going to make you a better wife, a better mom, and just mentally get you prepared to go back home and and feel like you have your fix on because for me it was like like I had no alone time like I had no me time and when I have no me time it just it it makes me unhappy in my environment well and you can enjoy your marriage and get back to loving one another you, you're gonna love your kids more when you get a break from them that's right that's that's just a fact yeah. when you get you get a break from them, and then you can and when me and you go out and have dinner and stuff, we can really enjoy ourselves, reflect, talk, and then go back and then talk to our kids. So you definitely need that alone time to – so it, these are just pointers, guys, that we picked up over the years that, that we're just giving you, right? And I highly, highly recommend you, you – some of you guys, if not all you guys, are going to fall into one of these categories that we're talking about where the, it's an out point in your life. Either you're, you're not making enough money to be valuable to your wife and kids or you – you know, you're not taking care of your body, so you don't have the energy to take care of the financial situation because you have no energy because you're eating like crap, right? It all it all goes into, you know, mind, body, spirit. You got to hit these three points, mind, body, spirit. If, if you're not taking care of yourself first, you're not going to take care of your wife, your kids, your allies, your business partners, nobody. One right? more point because this is a huge – this always comes in the mom groups as a, a question, but there's a lot of men who do work a lot. So when they get home, they want to do nothing. And that's usually very offensive. So personally, there's either you you get it done and you help or you hire help, like we were talking about, because you can't just get home and, you know, be valuable to everybody else all day long at your work and then come home and bring no value. No value I mean, to your wife or kids. If, if you can't bring any physical value, then you better hire help. But if, but he, in, in his defense, in his defense. he may be, at, he may be having a, you know, offshore job that makes 250,000. So Absolutely. That's, that's a lot of so value. He needs to be hiring help. Yes. Is what I'm saying. But in the other case, the wife needs to give him grace too. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and understand, you know, cause you remember that, that one comment where um, I forgot we were being interviewed on a podcast and uh, I think maybe it was Steve Trang or somebody actually said, how do you handle Chris working all the time? And you said, I'm on, I'm on vacation all the time. You know, if he's on the phone, I'm, I'm at Disney world, right? I, I'm at the beach, right? So you gotta, I'm telling you guys that because you gotta give your wife, you gotta give your, your wife's gotta give you some grace if all you do is work. Cause the value you're providing of, hey, yeah. I'm and you also get me help too. So that fixed the solution, but some of these women have no help. Um, I just think, I mean, look, you want to save your marriage, hire help. 100%, especially if you got a bunch of kids. Unless you now, granted, there are moms out there that are super moms that are like outliers. That's not me. They're far and few between. But but the mom <laughs> that's, that's like, dude, she can have, she has six kids and she smiles. She's so like, she's just a motherly mother. Like she's mother bear. Like there are freaks in nature out there that are really... Yeah. You know, that, that's not necessarily your style. You're a great provider for our kids. You love your kids. But, you know, you like to be busy and you like to have a game and you like to work, right? Yeah, I mean, I think I had four jobs and two kids um, at one point when we were younger. So so this is not a general, you know, I'm not trying to generalize. We're giving you guys perspective on what our, experience. our experience was. And you can reflect and and you can add and subtract. You might, we, we may say something on this podcast that you don't agree with. I don't expect you to agree with everything we're saying. If you agree with everything you're saying, you can't think for yourself. Mm -hmm. A highly intelligent, high-value man can extrapolate data and think with it and not agree with everything another man says. I don't agree with, with everything men say, even if, if I think they're smarter than me or they make more money than me. Like, you have to take what bits and pieces you gather from other, you know, men or women or podcasts and, and interject it into your life as it fits, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure we're clear on that. I, I'm, we're not saying we know it all. We're giving you perspective on our experience, right? Um, and, and so far, we've done a damn good job, right? I, I do feel like we, we've done a good job. And, and I think the reason why we're able to get through conflict is we have excellent communication. There is no hidden agendas anywhere. There's in no our bullshit. No. There is no bullshit. In I've our never been one to like hold thing in, hold things in, and I'm not gonna say anything. No, I'm gonna say something before I get really aggravated and things blow out of proportion, you know. So if we both feel a certain way, like we're gonna let each other know immediately. Another topic I want to talk to you about is about is a valuable man doesn't hang out with his friends anymore. 
Okay. Well, like I was talking about earlier about watching my parents, if they did hang out with friends, they were doing it together. It was not like really a one on, like one would go here, one would go there at all. High value men don't hang out with friends no more. Mm-hmm. High value men hang out with other high value men and they have a, they have a goal that they're pursuing together. Mm-hmm. They don't get together and just drink it. Now, every now and then, I don't want to say it, full exceptions that it never happened, but it's not, a but it's di- not every weekend. No, it's and you're not leaving a, your wife every weekend to go do those things. It's not the norm. No, it, it, it's, it's something that they may do once a, a special year, event. special event, mm-hmm. but high value men hang out with other high value men to get shit done, mm-hmm. not to talk shit about, you know, mindless entertainment or watching sports. And, you know, if you, a lot of you guys may be doing that, right. You wasting so much time. Right. And it, you're not becoming valuable to your wife, your kids or even other men. Right. I want to be a shining example to my wife. I want to be a shining example to other men who are valuable, who want to be around me because they find me valuable to be around. Well, and you want your kids to see you wanting to spend time with your wife and vice versa. That's exactly right. So, um, you know, it, at the end of the day, guys, you know, th- th- that's. That's my thoughts on, you know, this hangout thing. I think a lot of well, you guys are listen, doing too much hanging out. When you're working, you have kids, you have kids sports, you have all, you have so much going on. When Why do you have time to fit in any of that useless? You don't need to try to fit in useless stuff that doesn't bring value to your life. You're already busy. When you have the realization that, mm-hmm. you know, that especially if you're entrepreneurial, which if you're not entrepreneur and you're following me, you're probably a little confused is all I talk about is entrepreneurial shit. That's, that's my jam. When you have the realization, I had the realization at 22 years old, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a business guy. If you're watching this, I'm telling you the fastest route to being a high value man is to change your environment and get rid of all these people that are not high value men. Get around. Listen, iron sharpens iron. I am a valuable man because I put myself amongst other high value men or I studied high value men via books, via podcasts, via mastermind, via coaching. You, you want to be around other high value men. And that, that is it, you know, cause I know a lot of you guys, I want to we're probably think, well, how do I become a high value man? Right. You work out, you eat right. You make a shit ton of money, right? You help your allies make a shit ton of money. And then last but not least, you hang around other high value men, right? This is a really hard subject because environment is something that almost ruined us. Yes. Um, you know, a, a lot of our friends early on who got married around the same time all got divorced. I think pretty much all of them have pretty been divorced. Them, yeah. um, and then, you know, you pulled in one direction and you pulled in another direction. Then you feel bad hanging out with one and not the other. And, and then it brings drama into your life. And um, not to mention, you know, family, you know, coming into your marriage, you know, bringing in third-party ideas of how they think your relationship needs to be. And then that creates an argument where there wasn't even an argument to begin with, but you need to... You're better at this as talking about third party people. Well, when you say third party, you mean like other people right. in inside of your space, your environment. Yeah, no, you're gonna cut all those people out. Like you don't need to have a bunch of people in your life. You don't need a bunch of people in your life, especially if you're an entrepreneur. You the should hyper focus on like making your environment awesome. When you're trying to like make your bubble too big, like it's in it's impossible to like fix those things because you're only in control of so much. If you need a bunch of friends, you're a people pleaser. Let's be real. Entrepreneurs don't have a bunch of friends. They don't. Well, they, they don't have got, time for they it. They don't have time. Though. That's exactly right. So if you're an entrepreneur and you follow me and you got a bunch of friends, you're wasting a bunch of time. You need a small group of allies that serve you and you them. Mm-hmm. And y'all help each other make money. Y'all, get, y'all give each other value. That's, that's what, how you become a high value man, right? And another thing that, you know, a high value man does is, you know, he, he's not chasing endless pleasures all the time, right? He chases his purpose. Not that we don't, you know, us as entrepreneurs don't have, you know, certain pleasures that we want to chase, but a high value entrepreneur is constantly chasing the greater version of himself. Pleasures are secondary. The opposite, a, a non high value man, somebody that just doesn't have a purpose. What do they do all day? 
mindless entertainment. They chase pleasures on a daily basis via alcohol, drugs, sex, video games, ESPN, sports, what have you. They're trying to feel, feel the void. Purpose. They're feeling a void. Dude, you got to chase your purpose. Mm-hmm. That's, that, that's going to create more value in your life by you chasing the higher version of yourself and your pur- purpose and passion. If you hadn't figured out that purpose and passion, just take fucking action. Move. Start doing something. Your purpose will open up, open up. People say, well, Chris, I haven't found my purpose yet. Well, no shit. You ain't doing nothing. The, you, the universe ain't going to show you your, your purpose if you don't move. When you move, it'll present it. And you'll figure out your purpose in, as a young man. I did. I didn't know what I was going to do from 17 to 22. I just started on something. And then more opportunities open up, right? So be purpose-driven, not pleasure-driven. Stop trying to have all this mindless entertainment and get away from entertainment and get into knowledge, right? Get addicted to knowledge instead of entertainment. That's going to make you a high value man and bring your wife with you on this excursion. That's why everybody asks me, Chris, I want my wife to be like your wife. You bring her everywhere. Well, I did that intentionally, right? I, I, I bring you on purpose because it's made you. Yes, and I wanted you to improve just like me, and now you've become a lot more high valuable woman than I think you would have if you just because like I mean all the time we have these masterminds and we have these guys that come and like man I wish I'd have brought my wife. how many times they all say I wish I'd have brought my wife right so you have to it's your responsibility to make and help your wife or husband if you're a female become a high valuable woman or man now. Okay, let's just state the obvious here because, honestly, I wanted to be involved. There are some moms who you just were talking about, those super moms who just want to hyper-focus on being moms. They might not be willing to do this. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. This is not a... This is not a... Yeah, this is what works We're not, you know, stroking a broad stroke right here and saying that everybody has to be like this or everybody's got to be high value. Everybody's going to do exactly... No, listen, I'm giving you perspective on our life how we run our life how it works and it's worked for us it's going to really depend on your personality traits Mm -hmm. you should probably take a disc test Mm -hmm. yeah i'm a high d high driver you're a cheerleader creator creator and that works for us right Mm -hmm. the female in the in the marriage might be the driver and the man might be the cheerleader so it doesn't necessarily mean that um, there's no right or wrong there's no right just know your roles yep that's exactly right. So let's double back one more time because I think it's super pertinent to talk about environment because it's, it's the most important piece on being a high valuable man because you're going to be as valuable as the people around you. If the people around you are not valuable, you're not going to become valuable, right? Like I said earlier, iron sharpens iron as other men sharpen other men. So you're going to have to assess in your life who is a problem who is not valuable to you, who is actually, you know, a liability to you and who's sucking from you or they might not necessarily be sucking, but they could just be a toxic personality. They could be um, secretly, you know, trying to destroy your marriage or secretly not your biggest cheerleader, right? If people ain't, ain't for you, they are against you, right? And that's, especially as an entrepreneur, because we're so high you know, high performance, high driven people. We're trying to do well in life, trying to make money. If you're around people that are not doing the same thing, dude, you're going to get, you're going to get crushed. They're going to, they're going to secretly, they're going to secretly want to sabotage you. A lot of, a lot of stuff is revealed. You guys should pick up the book, the 48 laws of power by Robert Green, right? He talks a lot about this, right? Power, right? And you need to understand power when you're an entrepreneur, because that's what entrepreneurship does for you. It gives you back power, which is freedom. With freedom is power. I would say power is a lot of freedom, right? And your biggest detriment on this environment game is going to be friends and family. Friends and family. Our life improved when we did what, Patty? We cut off all of our friends, all of our family mm-hmm. on us. And that is how you're going to increase the value of your marriage of your life is that if you don't have a bunch of high value people in your life that are doing better than you, you're going to get sucked down and it's, it could destroy your marriage, right? 
or keep you from accomplishing what you want. Listen, I've gotten more done by not listening to people than listening to people. How many people have told me, Patty, in our family, do that. in our friend That's circle? That's scary. What if you fail? Yeah, or what's Chris doing? Or he's a scam? Or oh, And then once you make it, it's like, well, his mama must have gave him that, or his daddy did that for him. Like, it's just one thing after another, right? That's just all haters, right? Yeah, you have to block that out. And for us, you can do two things. You can handle them, or you can disconnect. That's exactly right. So we're going to wrap up this last um, segment of uh, how to be a valuable man and valuable woman by asking you, Patty, what is the, what is it? Maybe give the, the audience three things that you feel are the most valuable to you that I have provided for you. And I'm going to say what I've, I think you're the most, three things that I feel like is the most valuable to me, to you. That way you can give this audience perspective. Uh, I think you provide a lot of stability, which mentally was number one for me. Like, I needed a stable environment. Um, You provide, you know, you're very loving and nurturing in a lot of ways, and um, you're always there. Like, I don't have to beg you to be around. Um... If I need you, I just have to say, hey, listen, let's just spend more time. Like, I need more time. I think time for me, because that's a big, we were talking about the um, characteristics, like time is huge for me. And I think we communicate great. And so all those things just make things easy. So when life does get hard, we can just focus on those things. And usually it can be cleared pretty quickly. Yeah, that's good points. And, and, you know, for for me with Patty, what I find is the most valuable, say three things, there's probably a lot more things, is that, is that, I say first and foremost, she's a freaking mule worker. Like, you work. I like, like to stay busy. She is always getting stuff. That she looks around in her environment and figures out what needs to be done. Dude, that's a very valuable trait if you're married to a woman like that because there's – there's always something that needs to be done. But there's here. there's always there's always things that are done. Yeah. From you always wanting to get things done. Like there's never there's no like the house is never dirty. The kids always are, have everything they need. You always su- provide support when you know I need. So that's the first thing is that you're always getting things done, right? Um, secondly, dude, you still drop dead beautiful after forty after five kids and being forty two years old. I'm trying. So, it's a struggle. So the sex <laughs> sex life's still on point. Right? I don't know about another 30 years from now. You might might need a, you know. Or you might need Oh, a- shit, and you're right. I might need it. Um, so that that's a huge valuable point to me. I mean, you know, I think any man, any man wants a, a beautiful woman. Um, and three, I, I think for me, to give you guys perspective, is that you're my biggest cheerleader. I was hoping. And, and, you got, and no matter, when I'm down and out, and look, guys, you, you watch, follow me. I, I get down and out. You play the level I'm at and, and have so many things juggling, deals, businesses, um, everything we got it's going on. It's not always going to be good. No. Like this morning you called me and about 30 minutes later I was like, maybe I should call him again. I'm worried about him. And, you know, it's just like it's somebody saying, hey, you sure you okay? Like, you yeah. know, is everything yeah. all right? Or Because I'm not feeling that great yeah. either. Maybe it's just the weather. Like. Yeah. You know, you, you want to normalize it so well, where they can talk about it yeah. and then feel better about yeah. it. Well, I can confine in you. Yes. Well, I don't confine in other yes. men. Yes. And that's a season. Mm-hmm. You understand? Because back when I was in my 20s, I wouldn't confine in you. Because it's a season. We're a getting season. older. And it's- because he couldn't confine in me because I was overwhelmed with life too. Yes. Lots of kids. So we just felt like we had to hold in all our struggles because... We both had struggles and we were like, we didn't want to push that on each other, but then we were both struggling, you know, I mean. A valuable marriage is holding on long enough to develop the skill sets and wisdom to have an awesome life. Yeah. And to, and, and and to understand and each other. And to understand it's seasonal. Yes. Things are going to get better. Yeah. Things are going to get easier and then they're going to get hard again. And yes. then it's going to, it's not always yeah. going to be a struggle. When your marriage is really bad, just think, oh, it can't get no worse than this. It can only get better yeah. as, as long as I figure out how I can become mm-hmm. more valuable to, to and her. And as long as I'm putting in effort to try to be yeah. better. Yeah. But if you don't do all these things, you're not going to become valuable, right? Just to recap, you got to get your body in shape, 
You got to stop hanging around with your friends. You got to try to figure out how to make more money. You got to figure out how you can provide value to your wife and her to you. Like th these things are so important because we can all make all this money. We can be entrepreneurs. We could do well in life. And dude, if your wife hates you, you hate your marriage. It ain't, it ain't going to be fun, right? It's not going to be fun at all. So anyway, with that said, we're going to wrap this thing up. Appreciate you guys following us. Um, if this is your first time watching, give us a, a, a download. And if you're on YouTube watching this, subscribe, like, comment. And uh, if you're on social media, follow us at uh, Instagram at Real Estate Rude and at Living, Living the Real Estate Life. And Facebook, Chris Rude Entrepreneur. And Patty Rude. Yep. And just make sure you give us a sub, right? Give us a sub. Give us a give us a like. So comment. If you don't like this, you can even say that too. You can say I'm full of shit, right? You say Big Mama's full Sometimes of shit. Sometimes he is full of shit. Sometimes I, I am. Right? So anyway. All right, guys. Appreciate you and keep scaling up.